Hello, this is Dr. Brooke Patterson, and I'm going to speak with you about the characteristics of pain. It is important to understand the two main pathways of pain, nociceptive and or neuropathic processing. Patients can present with different types of symptoms and the need for accurate pain assessment is necessary to adapt non-pharmacologic and, and or pharmacologic strategies to improve clinical outcomes. Pain can be classified by acute or chronic. The duration provides information related to underlying mechanisms and treated treatment decisions. One type of pain I want you to be familiar with is referred pain. Referred pain can be felt at a particular site, but it actually originates from another location. For example, certain abdominal conditions such as cholecystitis or pancreatitis can cause shoulder pain. Neuropathic pain is another type of pain I would like you to be familiar with. Neuropathic pain can be difficult to assess and treat and may be perceived long after a site or injury heals. It can be described as numbness and tingling and or burning sensations. Causes of neuropathic pain may include diabetes mellitus, herpes zoster or shingles, HIV AIDS, sciatica, trigeminal neuralgia, phantom limb pain, and or chemotherapy. Chronic pain can be further divided into malignant and non-malignant pain. Chronic pain is diagnosed when pain continues for six months or longer. Malignant pain often parallels with a tumor. Chronic non-malignant pain is often associated with musculoskeletal conditions such as arthritis, low back pain, or fibromyalgia. Unfortunately, many patients with chronic pain are not believed. They are often labeled as attention seekers or drug seekers and so forth. Here's a question for you. A patient is crying and says, please get me something to relieve this pain. What should the nurse do next? One, verify that the patient has an order for pain medications and, in, and administer order as directed. Two, assess the level of pain and ask patient what usually works for his or her pain, administer pain medication as needed, then reassess pain level. Three, assess the pain level and give medications according to the pain level and the, then reassess pain. Four, reposition the patient, then reassess the pain after intervention. The correct answer is two. Options one, three, and four are incorrect because pain management should be collaborative and the patient is not part of the decision-making process in these answers. When talking about the aging adult, no evidence exists to suggest that older individuals perceive pain to a lesser degree or that sensitivity is decreased. Pain is not a normal process of aging and it indicates a pathology or injury. Pain should never be considered something to tolerate or accept in one's later years. Also, dementia does not impact the ability to feel pain, but it does impact a person's ability to effectively use self-report tools. It is also important to note that older adults may have additional fears about becoming dependent, undergoing invasive procedures, and taking pain medications in general. Because infants are incapable of self-report, pain assessment is dependent on behavioral and physiologic cues. It is important to understand that infants do feel pain. Children two years of age can report pain and point to its location but cannot rate pain intensity. It is helpful to ask parents or caregivers what words the child uses to report pain. After ages four or five, pain rating scales such as the FACES scale can be introduced. It is important to note cultural differences in pain. Make sure you review methods of working with an interpreter if assessing patients from a different culture and or who speak a different language. Remember, the lack of outward pain expression does not indicate an absence of pain. Poorly treated pain can lead to increased physiological and psychological cost. In summary, pain and expression of pain are influenced by social, cultural, emotional, and spiritual concerns. The following picture is an example of the opioid receptor response and how the brain perceives opioids. 
One thing to note in this picture is that opioids do slow down gastrointestinal motility, often leading to constipation. When looking at subjective data, pain is often defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. It is associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Remember, pain is always subjective and is whatever the patient says it is. The subjective report is the gold standard of the pain assessment. The next few slides list initial pain assessment questions. You will ask questions and document them in the patient's own words. Questions like, do you have pain? When did your pain start? What does your pain feel like? And how much pain do you have now are all important questions to ask. Other questions such as what makes your pain better or worse, how does pain limit your function or activities, and how do you usually re react when you are in pain are also important questions to ask. Pain assessment questions can be best summarized in the PQRST pain assessment tool. This is an easy acronym to remember questions to ask your patient regarding pain. It is also very commonly used in the clinical setting. Components include provocation, quality and quantity of pain, region and radiation, a severity scale, and the timing. Although I want you to remember that pain is always subjective, there is sometimes objective data that can support the patient's report. The pain may originate from an acute or chronic condition. However, physical findings may not always support the patient's complaints, particularly with chronic pain syndromes. Pain should never be discounted when objective and physical evidence is not found. Based on the patient's pain report, make every effort to reduce or eliminate pain with appropriate pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions. According to the American Pain Society, it is important to establish a diagnosis for the cause of acute pain, but symptomatic treatment should be started during the investigation process and should not be hindered. Objective data may include joint abnormalities, muscle and skin discolorations, swelling, masses, or muscle guarding. Individuals experiencing moderate to intense levels of pain may exhibit guarding, grimacing, moaning, agitation, restlessness, stillness, diaphoresis, and or change in vital signs such as an elevated blood pressure, pulse, or respiratory rate. However, with chronic pain, behavior symptoms may include bracing or rubbing, diminished activity, sighing, or changes in appetite or activity levels.